When I asked my audience to vote for the name of my new podcast, I suggested names such as Authentic Business with George Cow, Authentic Business for Self-Employed Professionals with George Cow, and I think one other minor variation. But one suggestion came up that a lot of people liked. The suggestion was from Johannes Kleinowitz. Thank you so much. Uh, who said business Dow with George Cow. And I thought that was a fun, playful name. So I did another vote asking people, hey, do you want business Dow with George Cow or do you want authentic business growth with George Cow? And it was 37 people voted for business Dow and only four people voted for authentic business. So here we are with the podcast name, business Dow with George Cow. So a few people were rightfully concerned. Well, we'll see if it's rightfully, you can let me know, but they were concerned about cultural slash religious appropriation. Um, you know, I'm not a Taoist master. Uh, I haven't studied Taoism in depth. I don't talk about it that often. Um, rarely, do, I mean, I do bring in uh, a few quotes from Lao Tzu every now and then. Um, and never mind that I am Chinese, which is where the culture of Taoism springs from, and that I can actually pronounce Dao De Jing better than most Western scholars of Taoism, because I, I know the language, uh, at least I know how to pronounce it. And by the way, Lao Tzu, right, it's actually pronounced Lao Tzu. Anyway, so never mind that. Um, I, I do agree that, and, and the other thing I should say, never mind that Taoism and Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu they would have not cared at all who, what cultural appropriation, religious appropriation is, honestly. I mean, uh, in fact, if, if you look at the history of, of Taoism, it was quickly bastardized with people putting things in various texts, ancient texts that were supposed to be Taoist texts and, and you know, many sects you know, sprung out of Taoism uh, that, were con that were called Taoism. Anyway, it was, it's, it's, it's characteristically a philosophy that is about non-attachment. It's about, it's okay what people claim, what people say, um, we are not attached to, you know, what is the first verse of the Tao De Jing? What's the first verse? The Tao that can be named is not the Tao, right? <laughs> Meaning let's not concern ourselves with definitions and lineages and giving credit to where it's due because the Tao doesn't take credit because everything uh, everything is part of the Tao anyway. So the Tao doesn't take credit and Taoists don't. I think, I think what I understand of, of philosophical Taoism is credit taking is not, you know, cultural appropriation. That's not the kind of thing that Taoists would think about. Um, regardless though, it did inspire me, that question did inspire me to look at Taoism again, because I, I have read the Tao De Jing uh, multiple times in my life, and it's been a while. So I, th I thought I'd go back and go, hmm, what are some principles that I can apply from Taoist thought into business? So here we go. And speaking of effortless action, or Wu Wei, um, I, uh, I have a blog post here. So I'm just going to Kind of re reference the blog post so I don't have to think so hard. <laughs> it's a Taoist way of, of, of going about content creation. All right. So the first principle, not surprisingly, I'll bring up is authenticity, right? So that is one of the, the core tenets, I think, of Taoism is to uh, sense into the flow of life, which maybe can be another interpretation of the Tao. Um, and how do we merge into the flow of life? And, and how do we apply that to business? Well, if you look at mainstream business, it's very egocentric. It's about, well, it's, first of all, it's about profit. So it's about how do I benefit myself and my business and do whatever I need to do to make more profit. And in fact, much of mainstream business is about short-term profits. If you look at, well, the stock market is based on the short-term profits of corporations. And if you look at a lot of small businesses that don't think in the long term, they think, oh, I'm just going to make the sale 
So customer service is sometimes not very good. They just want to get the sale done and just rather than ma making a relationship. Now, of course, I think very savvy business owners uh, think about the long-term relationship, but mainstream business doesn't really have that as a general teaching. All right. So, so authentic business, right? The, the kind of business that I teach is all about how do we create and sell that which is deeply meaningful and also the process of in the process through which we create and sell is also applying authenticity. So it's not about the typical way of thinking about business and even so-called conscious business or heart-based business. So much of it is a means to an end. We do the marketing in the mainstream ways, sales funnels, scarcity, you know, hype, uh, selling to the client's pain points, you know, um, uh, opt-in bait, you know, uh, we, we, we use mainstream marketing techniques so that we can then be heart-based with our clients. The mainstream marketing, we don't have to be heart-based there because we don't know how to be heart-based. We just do what the marketing experts tell us, even though it feels kind of icky. But once we get clients, then we can be all heart-based and kind and, 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 and uh, long-term with the clients. And the way I always say is most people who interact with your business will never buy from you. That's just statistics. And the, the more successful your branding and marketing is, the more that's true. More people will encounter your brand or your marketing through word of mouth who will never buy from you compared to the small percentage who do buy from you. Again, the more successful your marketing, the more that's true. So in other words, the impact that we are making in the world is mostly through our marketing. So how, that's why I, I, I say it's so important to bring authenticity, not just to serving clients, but to the marketing itself. And even, well, let me go on to the next um, principle. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this in slightly a different order than what I have in a blog post. But the next principle I bring up is effortlessness, right? Effortlessness, which is what everyone wants. Oh, I just wanna go with the flow. I just wanna be able to just show up as my authentic self and everybody wants to buy from me or hire me or work with me. And it's effortless. That's all we all, what's what we want, right? Now, I think it's unfortunately uh, not applied correctly, at least if you want to be in business. You can be, by the way, I should say, the most Taoist person that, I, that I've known uh, in, not personally, no, but the most Taoist person uh, in modern history that I'm aware of who lived in modern times and really lived in a Taoist way is Peace Pilgrim. If you've never heard of her, I highly recommend going online and search Peace Pilgrim audiobook. It changed my life. It was what one of the things that really made me have a spiritual breakdown and breakthrough, you know, about uh, six, seven years ago that made me totally shift how I do my business from mainstream to authentic business. So Peace Pilgrim, but Peace Pilgrim didn't have a business. She didn't take any money at all. But she lived truly like Lao Tzu talked about in the Tao Te Ching, right? Like she, she really lived like that, um, fully with the flow of the Tao. And she had so much peace. Well, her, hence her name. But she also got so much done. But it was, there was no business involved. So already trying to apply Taoism to business is it's a corruption of it. Um, truly, I, I think it's a corruption because I, I think once, if, and when our society truly moves into the Tao, I don't think it's, there's going to be business as an exchange of, oh, I, I will only give you that if you give me money. That's going to go away. But while we are still living in the society where we do need to exchange things for money, then we can do our best. And I think Lao Tzu and Tao Te Ching would be okay with that. It's not, I don't think, I don't think Taoism is a perfectionist, perfectionist type of religion to say, oh, if you didn't do it that way, if you didn't do it right, then you are, you know, you should be cast out and you should be judged. No, Tao Te Ching is, is actually quite, quite gentle. I mean, as, as the Tao is. So even though it's a corruption of Taoism to bring it into business, 
uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to to bring some of it into into business as much as we can. So effortlessness, Wu Wei, you can't really be effortless, <laughs> right? This is also a, a corruption of you know um, the law of attraction that. Oh, uh, sit on the couch, imagine the red Porsche, imagine money showing up in your mailbox. And then, so that's, that's, a, that's a bastardization of effortless action. What I, what I mean, what I think effortlessness is as applied to business is um, to look at what we do as worthwhile in itself rather than as a means to an end. So, if I, if I am doing this as a means to getting you to do something, call to action, you know, buy from me, sign up for my newsletter, whatever, then I am going to be performing and not within my authenticity. And it's not going to be effortless because it's going to be uh, hanging on, grasping energy, attached energy to what, what you do. But effortless action is connected to authenticity and connected to detachment, which is the other principle I'll, I'll bring in, in that we are doing the action out of love. We're doing the action and love, capital L, with the biggest sense of the word, which I think love, capital L, encompasses joy, it encompasses service, it encompasses gentleness, compassion, um, the heart. So the action I'm taking is from that place. It's like when a child is in love with a game or a toy or a person or a, an action. It's that kind of childless, childlike, loving play. Um, then you can also say it's when an adult, a mature adult, is doing volunteering right there and, and it's a, it's done out of love and service that is what i think effortless action is in business now we do have a desire which is why it's corruption of Taoist principle we have a desire for profit it's true but the way that authentic business is done is that we are detaching profit from any one action that we are making so when I'm writing a blog post, when I'm making a video, I don't attach an outcome to say, ooh, people better like this video, subscribe, share, comment, no. And sometimes I might even say that, but it's like, I don't, I don't care if you do, essentially. I don't care. It's effortless, it's detached, it's authentic. I don't care if you like my stuff, <laughs> okay? What I do care about, if there's any care, it's how I am coming into this moment. So out of Taoist principles came Zen Buddhism. It came, you know, well, not, it, I don't know about Stoicism, but Stoicism is very much connected to Taoist principles as well. Uh, and it also came, um, I don't know, I, my, my guess is that some Christian uh, saints and scholars like, you know, Sir, um, um, St. Francis, right, of Assisi had the Taoist aligned with the Taoist principles, even though they might not have studied it or whatever, right? So there is something to be said there with the universality of the Taoist principles. And that's why we can bring some of that, as much of it as we can into business. So thank you for uh, being willing to uh, engage in this conversation with me. Uh, a lot of you are listening to this as the first episode. I think this might be the first episode of the podcast. And uh, some of you are watching this on YouTube or on Facebook or somewhere else. Um, thank you. Thank you for engaging in this conversation. And if you have any thoughts, please go ahead and add them below um, on how, what other Taoist tenets, principles, spirit can be applied to business um, that you have seen in your own life. Maybe you've seen how I do certain things and some things are so obvious to me that I don't even think about talking about it. So you might, if you notice something I do that is, has a Taoist bent to it, you might want to mention that. I'd love to, to know. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I hope this adds a little bit to the how Taoism applies to business conversation. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video or podcast episode. Thank you.